This program has been produced to explain the fitting procedures to be carried out if you require to replace a window, a body panel, or carry out maintenance adjustments to the entrance door on a Leyland Lynx. Unlike many existing body designs, the Lynx has direct glazing, which means that the windows are bonded with an adhesive to the body structure. The same technique is used on the body panels. In order to carry out any repair, a different technique has to be adopted. Let's first of all look at the window removal and replacement. First, it will be necessary to remove the roof panel immediately above the window. And before removing the panel, remove the anti-rattle rubber strip. Next, remove the two cappings at the bottom of each of the pillars. Then, release the 10 mm nuts at the top and bottom of each pillar. The pillar will then lift out. Next, remove the side panel finishing strips, which are riveted. Remove the anti-rattle rubber strip. And the finishing strip at the bottom of the panel. The side panel can then be removed. Drill out the rivets on the waste rail. and remove the rail. Remove the rubber finishing strip between the window and the hopper unit. The next stage is to cut the adhesive, securing the window. In order to cut the adhesive, the most effective method is to use a cutter which has an oscillating blade. On the cutting blade, there is a roller, which limits the blade's protrusion to avoid damage to the surrounding seals and glazing. For guidance, you should use a blade of 22 mm protrusion on the vertical seals, 19 mm on the horizontal. To assemble a blade, remove the clamp screw, place the selected blade on its location, and retighten the clamp nut. The cutter has a variable speed control and when initially installed into the adhesive bead it should be on a low setting and when established the speed can be increased as required. No undue force is needed when using the cutter providing the cutter blades are maintained and sharpened at regular intervals. And remember the use of protective goggles is recommended when using this instrument. Moving now to the outside of the vehicle, the strips between the windows must be released as these are again held in with adhesive. The cutter should be run down both sides and the strip can then be removed. The strips are normally damaged when they're removed so replacements should be available. Remove the seal between the window and the hopper unit
Again, it will be necessary to use the cutter to release the adhesive behind the finishing strip. At this stage, the glass must be supported from the outside of the vehicle and to give the window the final release, run the cutter around the window once more. With the finishing strips on the side of the vehicle removed, the tip of the cutter can be seen penetrating through the adhesive. When this is complete, the window can be lifted clear of the vehicle. Before replacing the window, it will be necessary to prepare the window frame. The adhesive on the frame should be carefully trimmed with the cutter using a special blade so that it is smooth. Attempt to leave a thin layer of adhesive intact if possible. Next, clean the adhesive area with this special cleaning fluid, but remember to wipe it off immediately. Should there be any areas where there is no adhesive, these must be primed with this special primer, designed for painted surfaces. Before using the primer, ensure that the contents of the container are thoroughly mixed. If this procedure is not followed, the adhesive will not bond to the window frame. Let's now look at the procedures involved in preparing the glass. If you're replacing the old glass, again carefully trim the old adhesive but take care not to scratch or damage the obscuration band on the glass. Upon completion, clean the adhesive area and again, any areas where there is no adhesive, a special primer must be used. This is a special glass primer and is different from that used on the frame. If a new glass is used, the primer must be applied over the complete adhesive area. Provided a period of at least 15 minutes has elapsed for the glass and frame primer to dry, the adhesive can now be applied to the window frame. The adhesive used is better seal. The adhesive bead applied to the window frame should be 10 millimeters in thickness and triangular in shape. This can be achieved by cutting the nozzle in the following way. Cut the nozzle back at a slight angle to give a 10 millimeter hole. Then cut a V 10 millimeters long, like this. The adhesive can be applied with a handgun However, a power-operated unit makes the operation much easier. And a more consistent bead thickness can be achieved. The nozzle should be held against the frame at a slight angle, like this, with one edge of the V on the edge of the frame, as this would give a guide to the adhesive bead during application. It should be remembered that the adhesive starts to cure after 20 minutes. Therefore, always carry out this operation without delay. Fit the window into this waste rubber finisher and hinge the glass in. Push the glass in firmly to ensure contact with the adhesive and then ease the glass out so there is a bead thickness of approximately five millimeters. Unless this is carried out, the glass may be in contact with the frame, which will cause failure in service. Finally, check the glass alignment in relation to the existing windows on each side and adjust if necessary. To continue, measure and cut to length the replacement finishing strips. The 
The strips are again bonded with better seal and therefore the same preparation of cleaning and glass priming must be carried out in the adhesive areas on the glass. The plastic finishing strip must also be clean and primed using the paint primer. If the adhesive is applied midway to each side of the strip to a thickness of three millimeters, this will give adequate bonding and avoid adhesive spreading beyond the finishing strip onto the glass when located in position on the vehicle. It should be noted that the curing time for the adhesive does vary depending on weather conditions and can take up to 12 hours for complete glass security. Therefore, allow approximately three hours before fitting the finishing strips to avoid disturbing the windows. To complete the exercise, replace the interior trim. If you're required to remove the hopper window, the main window glass must be removed first. Due to the window frame shape, a special cutter is available to cut the adhesive. Moving now to the windscreen. If the windscreen has to be removed, you should be aware that it is mounted in a fiberglass frame. Therefore, when using the cutter, it must be biased towards the glass. Otherwise, the cutter may damage the fiberglass frame. When replacing the glass, the fiberglass surface should be primed with a paint primer if required, and in addition, because the glass is freestanding, it will be necessary to pack the glass at the bottom to hold it in the correct position until the adhesive is cured. Let's now look at the procedures involved in removing a damaged side panel and the refit operation for the replacement. The panel has a Bostic adhesive on the sides and lower edge. The top edge is just located in the waist rail. Therefore, the panel must be removed from the bottom upwards. To gain access to the lower edge of the panel, first remove the lower skirt. This is retained by three upper screws and three screws on the underside. To give protection to the paintwork on the surrounding panels, place tape on the edges. Ease down these three brackets. Depending on the location of the adhesive bead on the lower edge, it may be necessary to gain access for the cutter to bend the edge upwards. The blade on the cutter does not have a roller as there are no restrictions and this will give maximum penetration to the cutting blade. When the bottom edge is completely released, the panel can be peeled upwards in stages. When both sides are released, the panel can be disengaged from the waste rail location. With the panel removed, check that the anti-drum strips are intact on the top rail and body struts and replace if necessary. This is the material used on the top rail and this on the body struts. The existing adhesive on the panel frame should be trimmed back again using the special cutter. The adhesive area on the panel and the frame must be cleaned with Gentlean. The panel adhesive is Bostic 2639. A 10 millimeter bead should be applied to the frame with the exception of the top rail. The panel should be engaged in the top waste rail and pushed firmly into contact with the adhesive 
and finally adjusted for alignment with the existing panels. A period of six to eight hours must elapse for the adhesive to cure before the vehicle is put back into service. During the next section of this program, we will be looking at the operation and adjustment of the exit and entrance door. The doors are air operated and have these three sets of controls. The driver's control, emergency controls at the head of the door, and finally an outside emergency door open button. Contained under this cover plate is the combined air filter and air regulator. Which can be adjusted to give an air supply pressure of 75 pounds per square inch to the doors by releasing this screw and rotating the knob, either clockwise or anti-clockwise, to either increase or decrease the pressure. Located here is the bleed valve, which provides the air logic for the door controls. During maintenance, any water that may be present in the air supply can be drained off by pressing this button on the bottom of the filter. Let's now move on to the adjustments on the doors. The door support arms and pillars are one unit. However, the door height can be adjusted on the lower pillar support plate. As a starting point, the lower edge of the door should be adjusted on the pillar to give a clearance of approximately 70 millimetres from the step. The next stage is to set the door squared in the aperture and also position it so that the pillar side of the door is approximately 36 millimetres from the door aperture. Adjustment is provided to do this on the top of the door by slackening these two nuts. And also at the bottom of the door by two Allen screws. The next check is to ensure that the door is vertical in relation to the body. If not, release the securing screws on the top roller guide rail and move in the elongated slots until adjustment is correct. The remaining door should be adjusted in the same manner. After completion, check the contact on the central door seal. If a gap exists, or the seal is under compression, move each door an equal amount on the horizontal adjustment until the rubber seal is just in contact. The door actuators are adjustable for stroke and speed of operation. Depending whether the door is opening or closing, the speed is dictated by the rate at which air enters the cylinder, balanced with the rate at which air can exhaust back to the air bleed valve from the other side of the piston. Therefore, if you wish to adjust the door speed, first screw in fully both adjuster screws and release each an equal amount until the correct speed is achieved. By doing this, both opening and closing speeds are adjusted. You will notice that the actuator, when it approaches the end of its stroke, 
slows down to cushion the final part of the door closing or opening. This function is built into the cylinder. If it is found that there is no cushion one direction, it may be that the operating rod is not central on its stroke adjustment. If, for example, there is no cushion on closing, lengthen the rod or shorten the rod if the problem is on the opening cycle. Should there be no response to this adjustment, the cylinder is at fault. To conclude in this training video program from a safety point, always follow the manufacturer's instructions in the use of adhesives and cleaning fluids. When working with glass or cutting equipment, always wear the necessary protective clothing and safety goggles. We trust the information in this program will prove to be helpful when carrying out these repairs and adjustments.